we collaborated with um, three digital artists. One of them was MRE, the other one was Nadia Fukash, and the other one was Gala Marissa. Uh, all different in their ways uh, on what they create. We, uh, we've minted uh, with them six pieces, and the idea is we introduce our client base um, into a, a digital um, NFT market uh, to educate our audience uh, and bridge the gap between a physical piece and a digital piece by offering both. An NFT is a non-fungible token where you'll take uh, a piece of art uh, digitally and then what you'll do is you'll put that onto the blockchain and what that blockchain does is really authenticates that piece, acts as the signature for the piece and then can give you the providence of what's taken place with that particularly digital piece of art. So as an example, um, who bidded on the piece, when they bidded, what offers were made, what offers were accepted. With the word she can get. I don't know if you could see the screens over there, but the uh, one in the middle is Central Park Tower. That was the um, front page of the Rich List that was launched on the 23rd of May this year. And that front piece there was auctioned off, and that went for a, a record uh, for him as an artist uh, at $53,000. The other piece uh, to uh, my left there is uh, the Overfinch, that's the Overfinch car there. And what we've done is we've decided to bring the physical piece together with the digital. He's created what we believe is a fantastic NFT. That NFT shows the spaceman driving the Overfinch, um, minting uh, and creating Ethereum. The likes of Damien Hirst and Richard Prince, who are you know, blue chip artists, they've sold at auction for, for decades. They're producing digital work now in the NFT field. And you've got other people in other industries um, producing NFTs now and creating uh, grimes, like you say. Steve Aoki, big DJ, I think he's one of the top selling NFT artists at the moment. So what it does allow is that cross-pollination between different brands and different industries, which is exciting. Back in the day, we had the uh, the impressionists and your old masters who were who were painting pieces that were you know almost photorealism per per perfectionists. Um, if they'd have seen what was the mainstream now um, with street art and Keith Haring and Basquiat, um, they'd be pretty opposed to it at the time as well. But it's just it's just a natural progression, I think. COVID did serve as a catalyst for so many things, including NFTs, and people were thirsty for art. Uh, they wanted to see arts, and artists wanted to, to show their works. I think that's how it became so popular. We kind of uh, accelerated the process a bit for NFTs.
I think it might be a threat to some artists and some people. Uh, in my case, it's not really because I do start with a traditional approach. Uh, I use stage photography and then I turn it into a digital artwork. So it still requires composition, you have to work with materials, you have to work with your imagination and visualize the end result before you produce it. Uh, other artists probably just go straight on their computer and play with it in order to create an artwork. So I think it works very different for different artists. So that's why you have different medium artists and it's great to have a choice 